Welcome to Chattanooga, Tennessee, where for the 13th straight season, the scenic city provides a familiar backdrop for the Division I football championship. Also familiar to this setting are the Montana Grizzlies, who've advanced to the championship game for the seventh time, twice claiming national titles. Their opponent, not so familiar on this stage, the villain of the Wildcats, playing for their first ever title. From 16 teams, down to two, only one will call themselves national champs at the end of the night. It's time for you to show and prove, and trust me, I will not. If you can't keep up, keep up, let's turn it up a notch. It's showtime and the pressure don't stop. stop, stop. It's time for you to show and prove, and trust me, I will not lose. lose. You're watching the NCAA Division I College Football Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. A championship will be won tonight here at Finley Stadium in Chattanooga. Two teams that have never met squaring off for the FCS title. It's Montana against Villanova. This is how we've reached this point. In last week's semifinal round, Montana having to hold off Appalachian State in a blizzard in Missoula, while Villanova coming from behind to knock off rival William and Mary. So glad you could join us on a Friday evening here in Chattanooga with my partner Brock Heward. I'm Eric Collins. Not only is a championship on the line this evening, but history is at stake as well. The Montana Grizzlies trying to become just the fourth team since 1978 to have a perfect record in FCS play. And this program just continues to make history. 17 consecutive years to the playoffs, 12 consecutive Big Sky titles for Bobby Houck, and what a run they have had. And it's going to be a difficult task tonight against a Villanova team very adept on the ground. Well, Montana taking on a Villanova team that is on a tremendous roll so far this season. And really, it's been a celebration of their longtime head coach, Andy Talley. Now in his 25th year on the job, it's been a magical season from start to almost finish. And it's remarkable for those who have watched Andy Talley over 25 years. An offensive guy who's been known over that time to throw the football all over the field. But this year, his Wildcats are fourth in the country rushing the football, and their quarterback is actually their leading rusher. If they're to bring this championship back, they must control the game on the ground. Well, for more on these two charismatic head coaches, let's send it down to the third member of our crew, Kara Capuano. Kara. Well, guys, to put it in a little bit of perspective, Bobby Houck was just beginning as an undergraduate student at the University of Montana when Andy Talley began his tenure at Villanova back in 1985. The two met in person for the first time this week, but they did have an interesting exchange during last year's playoffs. Following a devastating loss to James Madison in the quarterfinals, Talley predicted that it would be a slam dunk for his conference opponent to beat Montana in those semis. Bobby Houck responded by saying, had Villanova advanced, he would have beaten the Wildcats by 50. And then, of course, the Grizzlies did win that semifinal game against JMU to get to the same grand stage as last year, as this year. They're back for another opportunity to win. And this week, the two coaches, nothing but shared respect and admiration between both of them heading into tonight's title bout. Eric? Kara, thank you so much. It's nice to see that Kara is dry right now. We'll see if that uh, remains the case. Temperature 40 degrees here at kickoff. Wind just a little bit. We have a chance of rain, 60% chance of rain, we're told. It's actually been raining throughout the course of the day, but no rain right now as we begin this championship game. Montana, they've won the toss. Villanova will receive. So Montana deciding they want to go on defense first. And let Villanova take the football here at the onset. Matt Caesar, Colonial Athletic Association special teamer and offensive player of the season. He is back deep to receive the kick from Brody McKnight. Here we go, underway in Chattanooga. Short kick. Caesar catches it at the 16 down the right side and barrels out to the 38-yard line. A return of 23 for the junior. And here comes the starting quarterback for Villanova. Now in his second season as the starter, Chris Whitney. Uh, I think a winner. At the end of the day, 24 and 5 in his career in the starts he has made. He's also very careful with the football. 17 touchdowns, just three interceptions, one fumble for this team's leading rusher. 
Whitney from Warminster, Pennsylvania, which is a suburb of Philadelphia. Of course, Villanova itself is a suburb of Philadelphia, northwest suburb of the city of brotherly love. And before we can even get the first play from scrimmage off, there's a marker down on the field. Our referee today is Matt Young. And what's this all about? Would the game clock operator please reset the game clock to 14 minutes and 53 seconds. 14.53, thank you. So there wasn't a marker down, just uh, figuring out exactly what the clock should read. What's going to be the big key for Villanova offensively tonight, Brock? They've really got to control the game on the ground. They struggled in the first half a week ago, and Chris Whitney in particular will be careful with the ball. First play. Oh, a little flipperoo. Back to the quarterback. Whitney's got nothing going on, and he's going to run it, which is always a good option. Ball comes down, and Montana, do they have it? Villanova keeps possession of the football. How about that for a first play? A little trick play from Sam Venuto, the offensive coordinator for Villanova. That's not uncommon for Andy Talley's crew. He told us last week we're going to play the win. Two fourth downs. He went for it, a fake punt. There you see, that's what Montana does so well. Three Grizzlies to the football, plus 17 this year in the turnover column. Just unable to bring that ball in as Whitney fights back for it. So it's a gain of five on an odd play to begin the ball game. Movement on the line, and it's on the right side for the Villanova offensive line. I think it's Dan Shiree. 50 offense, five yards. Second down. Shiree, freshman from Feasterville, Pennsylvania, called for that penalty. That'll move him back five yards. And not uncommon in these national championship games, especially with true freshmen on the field. They're antsy to play. They've been sitting around the hotel the last two days. Both of these teams traveled here on Wednesday. Got to calm those early game jitters. Ball. Tony Cansey in the backfield alongside Chris Whitney. Ball is their the main carrier of their backs. Take it to him, get it out in space. Mikey Reynolds with the catch. He gets out across the 45 to the 46. It's going to be short of the first down marker. Take a look at the impact players for Villanova. Yeah, Matt Caesar, he averages about 12 touches a game. I wouldn't be surprised to see the ball in his hands a little bit more tonight. Dynamic in every phase of the game. Tim Takuka, he is their engine. Relentless as a defensive end. He'll have a tough matchup against All-American Levi Horn on the other side. And John Dempsey, an undersized safety. They put him around the line of scrimmage. Six sacks on the season. He, too, will be taking on a very large Grizzly offensive line. That was a gain of seven for Reynolds, bringing up a third down and three. Five receivers in the game right now. Whitney out of the gun, calls his own number, and he's going to be short of the marker. Whitney needed three. He got one. Austin Mullins, among others, making the stop. Montana's not a team that blitzes a whole lot. Just 22% this season. But on third down, you'll watch it often tonight. They will bring a well-timed blitz there. They bring both linebackers, stuff the gaps, give Whitney nowhere to run. Dominic Skarnecchia, who was magnificent as the punter last week against William & Mary, his first opportunity. A lot of adrenaline for Skarnecchia. Didn't know he had that type of leg. Ball goes into the end zone. It's a punt of 53 yards, no return, so just a net of 33. Skarnecchia was fantastic last week. He downed three punts inside the five-yard line. That one a little bit too strong. All right, so this is the Grizzlies' first opportunity on offense. Junior quarterback Andrew Sell coming out in the field. High school valedictorian at 3.75 GPA, majoring in mathematics, very smart and undefeated as a starter. 12-0 in his starts this season as a first-year starter for the Grizz. In the backfield next to him, Chase Reynolds and Dan Moore out of the shotgun. Sell wants to throw. Quick pass, it's complete. Mark Mariani with a gain of five on first down. We're going to see a lot of Mariani. 
And you're going to see a lot of Chase Reynolds as well. 44 rushing touchdowns over the last two years. He is downhill runner, and he likes to get there fast. Mariani, he's also a punt returner. He's the all-time leader for the school in touchdown receptions and receiving yards. And on the other side, Shan Schillinger, he is their safety. 56 consecutive games for the redshirt senior. Second down and five. Again, Sell wants to throw, and it's complete. Gets his tight end, Dan Bowden. That's going to be a first down for the Grizzlies, a pick up of nine. Two tight ends are used almost exclusively for Montana. One of them, Dan Bowden, with that grab. Top of your screen, you can see the lineups scrolling by. We'll start with the offense for Montana. That'll be followed by the defense for Villanova. Montana leading all of FCS football and scoring, averaging 36 points per game. A perfect 14-0 so far this season. Sell wants to throw for the third straight time. This one a little bit too strong, looking for Mariani. And Montana watched that William & Mary game from a week ago where the Tribe time and again took those little hitch routes. You'll see Villanova often blitz tonight. And they like to play zone, soft zone coverage behind it. And I asked Rob Fennessy, offensive coordinator, there you see a good shot of Bobby Houck. I said, are you going to be patient enough tonight to take all those little throws that they give you in the zone? He said, we have to be. Second down and 10. Villanova out of that uh, unusual 3-3-5 defense. They blitz a ton. Here they come. Sell, quick hitter. It's complete out in the flat. Another first down, Mariani still on his feet. Mariani's got a chance and slips down at the 34-yard line. Fred Maldonado on the tackle, but a gain of 32. Yeah, this first team all leaguers a special talent out in the big sky. Many of their opponents ready for him to graduate. And this is what he does, yards after catch. Bobby Houck said one of the three fastest players on this team. Everything he does is full speed, and there the kid from Haber, Montana, shows a little bit of his strength running through tackles as well. Big gainer, 32 yards, ball spotted on the 34. Empty backfield. Looks like a double pass. Back to the quarterback, Sell. And he's got room down the left side. Sell out of bounds inside the 20. That was a double pass. Sell threw it to Jeff Larson, who got it back to Sell, who picks up 14 yards. And Jeff Larson, the third string quarterback. Montana taking a page, usually out of Villanova's playbook. A team very aggressive with their trick plays. And Sell showing he's got a little athleticism besides the arm that threw 25 touchdowns this season. We're in the middle of December. Both teams have been working on the trick plays the last couple of weeks. Ball at the 19-yard line. They get to hand the ball off to Chase Reynolds. Still to the skies. Check down over the middle, making the catch, but with a knee on the ground, Dan Bowden, he's down where he makes the grab at the 13-yard line. I think those trick plays do a couple of things. I think it tells each of these teams' players that their coaches are going to be aggressive tonight. They're not playing not to lose. Instead, they're being aggressive and they're going to play to win. Both sides now, you've seen it on opening drives. And this lack of a run game doesn't surprise me. With all those blitzers and all those moving pieces that you see from Villanova around the line of scrimmage, uh, you might as well try to block them up and throw against the soft zone coverage. Five minutes into this one, and finally we have a carry for Chase Reynolds. He's met at the line. And actually may have lost a yard. Marquise Kirkland comes in from his middle linebacker spot and blows it up. Loss of one. This Villanova defense third in the FCS against the rush. Just 67 yards a game. Marquise Kirkland, Osiah Sunday, Terrence Thomas. Three very active linebackers. Tackling machines, all three of them in open field. First and third down for Montana. Third down and four. Need to get to the 10. Sell with time. Looks to the end zone. Incomplete. Javen Sambrano had it. It was ripped away by Eric Loper. You see Ross Ventrone get in there as well. Villanova this time actually rushes only three defenders. Drops eight in the zone coverage. 
You never like to see two receivers in the same spot. That's a double post concept. Unfortunately, the inside receiver got pushed, got into that throwing lane. None of those receivers, including Sambrano, like to be exposed with a safety lurking in the middle of the field. Sophomore Brody McKnight trying to put the Grizzlies on top. 32-yarder, and it's low. It's picked up by the holder. This is Larson again, and Larson throws incomplete, just a busted play. John Dempsey got into the backfield, and I think Dempsey may have been the one who blocked that kick. Pass. Talk about an eventful first possession for Bobby Hobbs, Montana Grizzlies. Snap was good. The hold wasn't so good. Larson, nothing to do except for throw it away. It'll be Villanova football when we come back. Missed opportunity for Bobby Hawks, Montana Grizzlies. They march down the field, but then they miss on a field goal attempt of just 32 yards. The snap was pretty good, but Brock the hold not so good. Yeah, doubly frustrating to see Bobby Hawks. He also acts as this team's special teams coach. Everything's set up there. Larson, the ball just spins out of his hands at the last second. And that's a frustration for a head coach who watches closely those special teams. Let's go down to Kara. Kara, what's going on? Well, guys, as you know, in separate conversations yesterday, both coaches told us they think this game is going to be closely contested, they think it's going to be a toss-up, and they both pointed out that special teams play could win or lose this ball game. Yeah, big missed opportunity. Thank you, Kara. To get those first points on the board, always a good thing in terms of confidence and momentum-wise. Wildcat formation now for the Villanova Wildcats. Matt Caesar is going to take the direct snap. Caesar is going to run it. Lowers the head and gets out close to the 20-yard line and pick up a four, maybe five. Sean Lepsock with the tackle. Expect to see a lot of Caesar out of the Wildcat formation. Yeah, and I like what defensive coordinator Craig Paulson from Montana told us yesterday. He said every time that Caesar is in that Wildcat, we're not treating that as a one-back. That is a two-back situation to us, and we'll make our run calls defensively accordingly. Whitney back in the game as the quarterback hands it off. Aaron Ball rips out to the 30-yard line for a first down for the Wildcats. Pick up of 11. And this is a guy I expect to see a little bit more from. He was explosive last week and minimal carries a season ago, well over 1,000 yards. This team this year down to 700, but a straight-ahead slasher. You see that there, no wasted movement. Plants that foot in the ground. The hesitation there by Whitney. Nice chunk run for the first down. Caesar in motion. They give it to him. Tries the end around. And Caesar, he's got a chance. What kind of speed do you have, young fella? Down to the 20 yard line. Caesar, biggest play of the game, a gain of 49. What makes him so dangerous? is he's all over the field. The times he's in the backfield, he'll come in motion, he'll be lined up outside. You gotta be so aware defensively of where he is. He's a 4-4 guy, the fastest guy on this football team, and he gets to top speed, as you can see, very quickly. Caesar had a 62-yard touchdown run a week ago against William & Mary. This time, rips off 49. Ball in the backfield with Whitney. First down and 10. Play clock winding down. They get it off. And Ball tries the right side. And he's got 11 yards once again. His second 11-yard carry of this drive. This was Caesar last week against the tribe of William & Mary. He caught passes. We saw him return punts. Also saw Caesar covering on kickoffs. Had a couple of tackles on kickoff coverage. And then, of course, from the Wildcat formation, takes the direct snap and cruises 62 yards for the touchdown. A little bit of everything for the junior. Whitney keeps it himself. And Whitney stumbles down inside the tent. Picks up a couple of yards. This kid, Caesar. As good a football player as he is, maybe a better baseball player. Led Villanova's baseball team in batting average this past spring. And there's a good chance that he'll 
even though he's only a junior in eligibility football-wise, that this could be his final football game. He was drafted out of high school by the Los Angeles Dodgers, and there's a good chance he's going to get drafted fairly high in this spring's baseball draft. So he may choose to become a baseball pro as opposed to playing the senior season. He's in the Wildcat formation. Takes the direct snap, tries the left side. And this time, Caesar tackled close to the line of scrimmage by Eric Stoll. And the edge is so critical when you play against Villanova. With all that motion they like to run, they run that read option where you see the quarterbacks that we saw earlier put the ball in the running back's belly, and either he puts it in there or he keeps it himself. And when you play against a scheme like that, your edge, whether it be your ends, your linebackers, in that case, Eric Stoll, the safety, has got to be so strong at the point of attack. And you see very productive touchdown numbers. How about 57 possessions in the red zone? Also very prolific moving the ball into this end of the field. Third and goal. Whitney, design rollout. Flushed out of the pocket, chased by Mullins. And tackled at the seven-yard line. Good team defense played by the Grizzlies. And Mullins, a redshirt senior, defensive tackle. Chris Whitney's a guy that's very careful with the football. I said earlier, just three interceptions this season. He is not going to force the issue. Just the smartest thing here, takes care of the ball and gets what he can. So Andy Talley has to send the field goal unit on. Nick Yako, freshman from Cleveland, Ohio. Trying to make a 23-yarder. Snap is high, hold is good, kick is true. First points of the ball game go to the villain of the Wildcats. So as the rain starts to come down here at Chattanooga, Andy Talley's team takes a 3-0 lead. Let's see if Montana can answer when we come back. NCAA Division I College Football Championship is presented on ESPN2 by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up. And in part by Twisted Tea, true iced tea taste in a hard tea. 13th consecutive year that Chattanooga, Tennessee has hosted the Division I FCS national title game. Villanova on top of Montana by a score of three to nothing. Villanova has never won a football national title. Montana, they have won twice. And a little topsy-turvy there. Montana likes to throw so far in this ball game, while Villanova choosing to keep it on the ground here in the rain. Villanova, 13-1, coming out of the Colonial Athletic Association. Their only loss coming during the regular year against New Hampshire. They avenged that loss in the quarterfinal rounds of these playoffs. Yeso with the kickoff. Short. Fielded at the 17-yard line. Javen Sambrano. And Sambrano moves the pack out out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. A return of 14 yards. Let's go back to the studio with Kevin DeGandhi standing by. Kevin. Eric, here's what's happening on Sports Center right now. Danica Patrick got a taste of Daytona driving a stock car. The Indy car driver completed five laps before rain washed out an architect. She's scheduled to make her NASCAR debut at Daytona in February. She was 12th of the 24 drivers. The Mariners continue to be the most active team in the offseason, acquiring Milton Bradley from the Cubs for pitcher Carlos Silva. Next Sports Center after our game. Eric Brock, we got a good one in Tennessee. Back to you. Kevin, thanks a bunch. Party folk here from Montana. They've made the pilgrimage 2,100 miles. And this is balmy weather for them. Got the shirts off. Chase Reynolds with his second carry. Bangs out for five yards. I think you can instantly see right on that TV the disparity between these two teams. Montana is enormous up front. I mean, one of the biggest lines you're going to see in all Division I football. Six foot eight, six foot seven, six foot seven, six foot five, six foot seven, and all 300 pounds against an undersized group in Villanova that loves to utilize their speed.
Cell wants to throw over the middle. Tight end Steve Baylor with the grab has a first down for the Grizzlies. These guys are huge up front for the Grizzlies. I mean, just the lone little guy, the center, Verlanik, the redshirt junior. Outside of that, you've got a bunch of power forwards, and Chris Dyke, a very good high school basketball player at six foot eight. They take up a lot of space, and Chase Reynolds, that little back, does a nice job hiding behind them, planting his foot and getting downhill. Reynolds lined up seven yards deep in the backfield. Sell wants to throw. Outlap complete Mariani. His third catch of the ball game. Close to the first down marker. Depends on the spot. We're gonna put it right down on that uh, first down line you can see on our screen. So does a nice job of stepping into that throw. Just a lot of soft zone coverage. Villanova, they believe in their system. Defense coordinator Mark Reardon is a great guy to talk to. He loves this 3-3-5 scheme, all the innovative, innovative blitzes he can bring. But Mark Mariani, you see the production there this season. He's going to have plenty of opportunities, be it on hook routes, on hitch routes, on deep curl routes, on comebacks, to win versus this one-on-one -on -one soft zone coverage. I expect Montana to keep this ball in the air tonight. This is going to be just a shot. Buccaneers won. As a, as a football player, Bobby Hawk right now, it's second down and a half yard. Would you prefer to be second and a half yard or first down and ten? Is he almost happy they didn't get the first down? Well, this gives you a chance to take a shot, and I think more importantly, Eric, is where you are on the field. You see how many times between the 40s you find offensive coordinators like to take a shot, and even in short yardage situations as well. It's a little bit of a chess match. You're going to guess, are they going to put a few extra bodies into the box? And if they do... And Rob Fennis, the offensive coordinator, may indeed take that throw down the field. Montana, the number one national seed, a perfect 14-0. Last time they lost a football game was actually on this field. Championship game a year ago against the Richmond Spiders. Richmond Spiders, like the Villanova Wildcats, coming out of the Colonial Athletic Association. Conservative play call. Reynolds has the first down and a bunch more. Scampers inside the 30. Inside the 25, down to the 24. Gain of 22 for the junior from Drummond, Montana. And yeah, the kid from Drummond where he played eight-man football, and I really like Bobby Howe. What he told us yesterday, he said, you know, I think that eight-man football was good for his vision. All those cutbacks, and one of the things you'll notice tonight, his ability to cut at full speed. He doesn't have to slow down. He makes those sharp cuts over 5,000 yards in his Montana B8 high school career. Reynolds now on the sideline. Thomas Brooks Fletcher, fifth-year senior in the backfield. Sell wants to throw. that says, I'll put this ball in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and I'm going to trust that Mark Mariani's going to get his body in front of that safety. You see Ross Ventrone, he was staring that seam route down, but Andrew Self trusted his wide receiver, and why wouldn't you? The school's all-time leader in touchdown reception and yards, and Mark Manny and Mariani delivers. Mariani had a whale of a championship game a year ago. He obviously likes Chattanooga. Scores a touchdown from 24 yards out. And the extra point makes it a 7-3 lead for the Montana Grizzlies. So Montana's had the football twice. Missed an opportunity for a field goal their first time, but this time they don't leave it up to the kicking game. A touchdown sell to Mariani. Get the touchdown to lead Villanova 7-3. Andrew Sell to Mark Mariani just moments ago. You know, Rob Fennessy, offense coordinator in Montana, told us yesterday with a lot of this zone that you will see tonight, 
out of Villanova. There's going to open up lanes deep down the field. Vertical shots down the seam. You see Ross Venturone circled in there. He's the middle safety. And that is a very aggressive throw by the quarterback. Staring that safety down. Not a huge window, but I expect a lot of vertical shots throughout the night. Offense is coming. Big chunks for the Grizzlies so far in this game. We haven't even played 12 minutes, and already they have three plays of 20 yards or more. McKnight will kick it off. Caesar back deep, but it's not going to get to him. Picked up by the up back. This is Lawrence Doss. And Doss still on his feet. Gets out to the 34-yard line. Good return. Let's go down to the sideline. Kara, what do you have? I have a special guest, guys. This is the inaugural ambassador to the football championship. And, of course, football fans recognize him. Wayne Prebet, former receiver at Hofstra, still the career touchdowns record guy at Hofstra University, a record that will stand a little bit longer. What have you done in your ambassador role? Uh, went to the banquet last night, gave some of the awards away, did kids' clinic today. It's been great. Festivity has been great. And you can hear it's a great atmosphere here. Outstanding atmosphere. Fans really passionate. And two great teams. I've been watching you, and you've been watching intently. What do you see from Villanova and Montana? I'm rooting for Villanova because I'm from near the Philly area. And Montana beat us 50 to 6 when I played them. So I uh, have uh, the great players on both teams. I think there's some guys that might get a chance to play on Sunday someday. We look forward to that possibility, Wayne. Thanks so much. Wayne will be, of course, participating in the post game award ceremony as well, Eric. Thank you, Kara. Thanks, Wayne. It's got to be a, a bittersweet time for Wayne Corbett and actually for a lot of people associated with the Colonial Athletic Association. The Colonial has been just fantastic the last couple of years in developing good football programs. Remember last year in Richmond, they won this uh, entire event against Montana. As a second down run, the ball is tackled from behind. But in the Colonial, there is a little bit of trouble. Two teams in the last month have decided to discontinue football. Wayne Corbett's alma mater, Hofstra, they've decided they no longer are going to play Division I football, and same thing for Northeastern. So despite the fact that Richmond, James Madison, and Delaware, and UMass have all won national championships within the last 15 years, a couple of teams not being able to make it, Hofstra and Northeastern. On third down and short, Whitney wants a bunch, looking for Harvey too strong. Looking for the big play on third down and three. It's an incompletion, and the punt team will have to come on for the Wildcats. And there you see some frustration actually on the sidelines for Villanova. They've not put in the air a bunch tonight. Heavily on the ground, and there's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with your leading receiver, Brandon Harvey. And Chris Whitney struggled a little bit. A 67% passer this season. Last weekend, really struggled with his accuracy against William and Mary. That time, he's put a little more air on the ball. Starnecchia, his second punt. This one, a low liner. It's going to bounce and be picked up. His dangerous play by the senior, Mary Annie. But he keeps it from dribbling inside the 10. Punt of 44 yards, no return. When we come back, Montana Grizzlies will look for back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. The Hardy folk from Montana have made the close to 2,100-mile trek from Missoula here to Chattanooga. They see the Grizzlies on top of Villanova by a score of 7-3. to three. Montana, located in Missoula, the second largest city in the Treasure State largest city is Billings. Enrollment of 14,000 at University of Montana. It's uh, called the Garden City, Missoula is. Handoff on first down. Chase Reynolds with the carry. And Reynolds bouncing out left side. Tackled after a pickup of eight. Ross Van Trone jumps on his back. Very good first down carry for the junior. And, Reynolds. and a really nice job by his fullback, Kevin Claybo. You'll see Montana tonight. They'll line up in one back. We're in a lot of zone. They're not afraid to put their fullback in there as well. Kevin Claybo, the red shirt senior. And Chase Reynolds trusts him a lot. Where Kevin goes, he locks in the contact. And you'll often see Chase Reynolds cut off of his blocks. Grizzlies a touchdown. Last time they had the football. Sell wants to throw. It's complete. Mariani, his fourth catch of this fourth quarter. Check that first quarter. You 
saw a lot of Mark Mariani. I think you're going to continue to see that be the case tonight. Andrew Sell has a lot of confidence in Mariani. And he'll do it in the flat. He'll do it down the sidelines. And this time for the touchdown up the seam through contact. Fearless as most great punt returners are. And Mariani, one of the best punt returners in the country, does not shy away from contact. And what a productive first quarter. Fresh set of downs. Another completion. Javen Sambrano crunched after a pickup of six yards. Sambrano, sophomore from California. He made the game-winning catch a week ago against Appalachian State. That was a fantastic game to watch. Grizzlies and Mountaineers playing up in Missoula in a driving snowstorm. Got 13 passes, four runs for Montana in that first quarter. Bobby Houck and his offense aggressive and sell right now very, very hot from the quarterback position. One quarter in the books. So far, so good for Bobby Howe. Big Sky Coach of the Year. He's got his Grizzlies on top of Villanova by a score of 7-3. to three. They'll continue this drive. When we come back, Grizzlies hot on offense on a cold, rainy evening in Chattanooga. second quarter here in Chattanooga the Grizzlies have been uh, chew chewing up yardage they have just been running down the field against this Villanova Wildcat defense and more of the same Chase Reynolds busts off a good rip down the right side pickup of 10 yards and you can see Bobby Houck on the sideline imploring his guys on he loves to see those big bodies leading on the run play get a body on a body let chase find that little seam and he'll get his pads down and make his yards montana's run 18 plays from scrimmage 14 of them have gained five yards or more not this time reynolds met in a hole and dropped at the line of scrimmage tackle made by marquise kirkland middle backer from syracuse new york and Mark Reardon, defensive coordinator, said to be very critical of their inside linebacker. And that's where the 250-pounder plays, that he matches the physical play of Montana's line up front. He is their thumper. He's the guy that plays between those A-gaps, comes downhill. You see the shoulder brace. He's a guy very willing to throw those 250 pounds around. This time, Reynolds slips and falls. Loss of a couple. Jumping on him in the backfield, Thomas Weaver. There's Mark Reardon. Ninth season working alongside Andy Talley. He's a great X's and O's guy. Last week, 72 of 76 snaps against William & Mary. They brought five or more. He told us in our production meeting yesterday, don't be surprised if it's 100% tonight. We just can't simply line up in our 3-3-5 and play vanilla. We're going to have to come after Montana. Third and 13, sell out of the gun. Incomplete short, looking for Sam Gratton. It'll bring up fourth down, and the punt team will have to come on. Capital One Bowl Week begins on ESPN tomorrow with a couple of games. 4.30 Eastern time, it's Fresno State and their fantastic running attack led by Ryan Matthews against the Wyoming Cowboys. That's the New Mexico Bowl. Then at 8 Eastern, fitting that it's a, a night game. It's the Golden Knights of UCF against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. St. Petersburg Bowl presented by Beef O'Grady's. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN360.com. That's tomorrow. Sean Wren to punt the football away. Takes his time. And that ball goes out of bounds. At the, now Dexley going to stay in bounds. It's going to be down at the 27th. Was that tipped? That just didn't have any thump to it at all. No, very deliberate. It's a wet night, and, and you already seen it with the field goal attempt that went through the hands of Jeff Larson. That time, 
to see the conversation with Bobby Houck. That time, Sean Wren took his time trying to secure that snap. I know it was a blizzard a week ago and very windy in Missoula, but tonight it's been pouring all day on this field. It would be a slick ball. These special teamers critical. They take care of the football. Punt of just 23 yards for Wren, and that was with the roll. Wildcats have the football. Option, keeping the football. Now tossing it out, man on the right. Mikey Reynolds gets out to the 40-yard line. That's going to be enough for a first down. Pickup of 13 for the sophomore Reynolds. That's a well-designed play. Mikey Reynolds actually their slot receiver. There you see the read option. Whitney does a nice job of tucking it. A nice pitch relationship. You see those receivers. Oftentimes, they'll receive that option pitch. Difficult for them to keep that distance from the quarterback. Mikey Reynolds does, and then move the chains. So far, so good for the Villanova rushing game. Over 100 yards already. They were fourth out of 118 FCS teams on the year in rushing per game. Look into the skies. It's complete. Long gainer. Baboro inside the 20, down to the 15. Pickup of 46 big yards. Whitney to Baboro. And not real pretty. The ball comes out a little bit loose, but Whitney does a nice job. You see the eyes there. Those influence that middle safety. Eric Stoll, he took it to the left just enough. And he hangs the ball up with Bavaro, a very capable receiver out of the backfield. Bavaro from the Youngstown, Ohio area. Gets the ball to the 15-yard line. Aaron Ball goes between the tackles and picks up four. Villanova was in the red zone once in that first quarter, came up short with the field goal. In a game of this magnitude, you've already seen from Mariani in the past game, you can't settle for field goals if you're Villanova. You've got to find a way to put sevens on the board when you're playing against the highest scoring offense in the FCS in Montana. Whitney out of the gun. He's got ball next to him in the backfield. Caesar in motion. Little option. Caesar's got the ball. One man to beat. Beats it and gets down to the 10. Nifty move, but his net's only a yard. George Mercer, a nice play, the fifth-year senior. One thing you'll notice as well about Montana is they will rotate their defensive linemen through. They'll play upwards of eight guys on that defensive line. Craig Paulson said it's their way to keep guys fresh. And there you see some fresh legs pursue down the line and help on the tackle. Nova is not converted to the third down. They're 0 for 3. Need to get to the 5. Whitney intercepted in the end zone. Lepsock has the football. Pass intercepted by number 10, Sean Lepsock. Not sure what Chris Whitney saw. to go to the left a two-man route and once again that ball just sails out of his hands that was a struggle of his a week ago against William and Mary he missed high on a lot of throws if you get down in that red zone that field condenses you miss high more often than not it's a turnover troubles continue for the Villanova Wildcats they march down the field but Chris Whitney throws just his fifth interception of the season Montana football when we come back is an opportunity they get the ball to the 10-yard line but then they stall on third down Chris Whitney throwing just his fifth interception of the season you're gonna see the two-man round up here just a little smash route with a corner excuse me here we go with the corner and you've got a little check down by your back and unfortunately makes the right read does Chris Whitney he sees it's three on two to the short side of the field he comes back to that check down and unfortunately, the ball flies out of his hands. Andy Talley told us yesterday, you've got to live with some of Chris's mistakes. But the problem, you get into these big games against good teams, you dig yourself a hole with those mistakes. You can't climb out of them. Grizzly with the football. 
catch made by Javen Zambrano. Gain of eight yards on first down. Tackle made by James Pitts and Fred Maldonado. And one capper on that interception thrown by Whitney. It was the first career interception for the linebacker, Sean Lepsock, who's playing in his final collegiate game. And Sean, like a lot of these fifth-year seniors for Montana, played a lot of football. The 55th game of Lepsock's career. Second down and two. The entire playbook open here for the Grizz. Sell so can't find a man. And just throws it away. Pressured by Tim Kakuka. First team all CAA performer. It'll bring up third down and two. There's Kakuka. Senior from Wall, New Jersey. Four-year starter who put up just very impressive numbers this year. 18 and a half tackles for losses. Close to 10 sacks at nine and a half. He's a guy who just doesn't quit. Constant motion. It's complete. Mariani makes the first man miss. Off to the races. Mariani inside the 30. Finally down at the 15-yard line. Ventrone saved the touchdown, but another huge pickup for the senior Mariani. 56 yards. How about the former walk-on tennis player? Three-time All-League tennis player out of Haver, Montana. Showing you the quick feet there, just that no hesitation, and that's what's so critical when you catch those short routes underneath. You can feel those defenders coming at you, and those good receivers at yards after catch make that first move, that initial move so quickly. And Mariani's got this top-end speed to finish off the big explosive play. Already 142 receiving yards for Mariani. Reynolds gets inside the 15 down to the 11. Osai Osunde makes the tackle, and he's still down on the field. Osunde, who was missing in action for a large part of the game a week ago against William & Mary, dealing with a hip injury, is now down on the field once again. And this is a big deal. Osunde, second team, Colonial Athletic Association player. Very important part of their defense. And a tough kid. He's battled a herniated disc all season. And from that, he's had hamstring and hip flexor issues. He is a captain on this team, a fifth-year guy that's also played a ton of football, over 240 career tackles. You're going to see some of these big kids from Montana. Just look at the physical play, and that's actually the fullback, Kevin Claybo. I told you earlier, he's a guy that just seeks out contact. The 225 pounder from Billings Claybo just delivers the blow on a Sunday. Sunday has already graduated from Villanova. Psychology degree. They need to play some mind games to convince himself that hip's not hurt and get back on the field. They're going to need him. Second down and five. Villanova trying to stop the Grizzlies. And off Reynolds has it. All sorts of problems get going on that play. Just able to make it back to line of scrimmage? Maybe not. Could be a loss of one. Terrence Thomas and Marlon Johnson on the stop. Yeah, the one thing you don't want to do between the tackles against this defense is hesitate at all. And that time, when you see the paint, I think that's just how Reynolds like it. A scrappy guy from a small town in Montana. He's littered with all those ground-up tires, the rubber marks, the paint from the 50-yard line emblem. I don't think the kid from Drummond Mines being a little dirty. Reynolds had 193 in the win last week against App State. Sell out in the flat. Complete another first down. Finds a tight end. Dan Bowden with the grab. A pickup of six. It's not a lot of rocket science from Bobby Hopps' crew tonight. Some vertical shots down the field. Lots of hitch routes outside. You know, Mark Reardon, he told us yesterday that this Andrew Sell is a very streaky passer. We must hit him early, get him uncomfortable, because when he gets hot, we're going to be in some real trouble. And right now, Andrew Sell doing a great job with his accuracy as well as his decision-making. Fresh set of downs, first and goal, ball the six-yard line. Reynolds has it. 
Reynolds down to the two. Well, Andrew Sell does come from good stock. Sell went to high school in Billings, Montana, went to West High School. That's the same high school that produced John Edwards, who was the quarterback the last time Montana won a national championship back in 2001. So Sell, if he wants to go back home, needs to get some bragging rights so he can hold his head up when having a discussion with John Adams and John Edwards. Pitch out. Reynolds tackled from behind. Phil Matus, senior from Greenville, Pennsylvania. Loss of one. One of the challenges when you play this Villanova defense, and especially in the red zone where that field does shrink. You've got so many of those players in space. You hesitate at all. You run horizontally. You're really playing into Mark Reardon's hands. And right now, Mark Reardon, Reardon knows how critical, how much momentum rides on this third and goal situation. Sell wants to throw into the end zone. Caught. Sambrano, touchdown! You now from the booth, it's a little bit easier to read that play. Sambrano, a very wide split, well outside the numbers. That often tells you a slant route. They pick on the true freshman, Eric Loper. Sambrano gets inside, and Sell delivers another touchdown for Montana. Looking for the extra point, Brody McKnight. A little dicey, but it goes through. So the lead swells to 11. 14-3 is our score. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll talk about the week that was here in Chattanooga. NCAA Division I College Football Championship. Brought to you by Audi, Truth and Engineering, and Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste and zero calories. Welcome back, everyone. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Both teams arriving here in Chattanooga early this week. A lot of festivities. Both teams going to the Tennessee Aquarium. There were lunches. There were awards, dinners. And, uh, well, when you get scuba divers, you know you're having a good time. I didn't get a chance to go to the aquarium, but I'm told one of the finest aquariums in the country here in Chattanooga. Both teams able to go and pet some... Uh, Got some water life. Yeah, I'll tell you, though, it was interesting. Bobby Haug talking about his seniors, and 13 of the 22 starters are indeed seniors, and they went to Bobby Haug and said, listen, after that Appalachian State game, we don't want to go to a bowl game. This isn't going to be a reward. This is a business trip. After losing that title last year, did not like the taste of that. Wanted to treat this trip like any other. Yeah, they mixed in the aquarium, but this is business as usual for the Grizzlies. Kick is short, Caesar. Starts in the 16-yard line, and he gets out to the 33. That's where the Wildcats will start on offense. They'll try and get some bad thoughts out of their head. Chris Whitney throwing an interception on the doorstep of the end zone. Last time they had the football. And there's plenty of time in this game. No reason to panic. You look at the stats to this point. 110 yards already for Villanova on the ground. Caesar had the big run of 50 yards. No reason all of a sudden chuck that game plan of being run first. The Whitney's got to do a better job in the passing game, throwing a little more accurately. Whitney fakes the ball, gets it out of the flat. Reynolds wrapped up quickly right at the line of scrimmage. Trumaine Johnson, who they're very high on, makes the open field tackle. Let's take a look at our Coke Zero game track as we're halfway through the second quarter. Mark Mariani, wow, what a first half. 142 yards already, he's got a touchdown. Quarterback Sell has been close to perfect. He's close to 200 yards so far here in the first half. While Villanova struggling in that red zone, settling for just a field goal so far in this game. 
Whitney hops here right side, makes the first man miss. Off to the races. Inside the 40 to the 35. The big fella runs for 31 yards. That's what he does well. He's just a gamer. He's not pretty. Andy Talley told us that. In fact, he said last week, I asked the offensive coach if we were struggling still into that second half, so we put our backup in. They said, no, you got to believe over time that Whitney will make, make plays. He's done it his 29 starts. He's not the fastest, he's not the prettiest, he's not the most elusive, but what he has been for Villanova over the years is very, very productive. 24 wins, just five losses for Whitney coming into this game. Another quick pitching catch, this time Caesar can't hang on. Pass. You can see him, it's very obvious just in the body language, that ball is slick, that ball is slick. You know, it's coming out of his hands, it costs him on the interception. One play deep down the field outside of that very little in the pass game and that would just put more of a burden on the run game The more he struggles in the past well, you can expect to see more and more of Montana's safeties creeping up to the line of scrimmage you know, Whitney was a little bit shaky in last week's win over William and Mary But one good thought for both Whitney and Villanova They were down by 10 at one point in the game a week ago against William and Mary and they came back to win now down by 11. So they've got history on their side, but that play doesn't work. Austin Mullins and Tyler Hobbs combined for a loss of two. Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN Sunday night. Damian Fletcher in Southern Mississippi taking on Dwight Dasher and Middle Tennessee. It's a battle of the Golden Eagles and Blue Raiders in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN360.com Sunday at 8.30 Eastern Time. Third and a bunch. Third and a dozen, they're calling it. Villanova's going to need to get to the 25-yard line. And here comes the blitz. Whitney sees it. He changes protection. Three receivers to the left side. He looks that way. Has a man open. This is Caesar. He's got the ball. First down inside the 10. Caesar out jumped Eric Stoll for the big gainer. A pickup of 29. And that's well done. You go to the empty formation. You're going to get this chance to see what Montana will do defensively. Montana decides to roll the dice. They play man-on-man -man coverage. You see Stoll get turned around on that corner route. A little less air on that football, and it's a touchdown. But Villanova will take the big first down, and once again, into the red zone now for the third time tonight. Ball on the eight-yard line. Caesar catching a blow on the sideline. Whitney keeps it. Breaks a couple of tackles. Gets to the five. Now this red zone's been pretty good to Montana this year. 20 of 39 are opponents. Now you tack on the two others. So under 50% this season holding opponents to touchdowns. And I said earlier, and Andy Talley knows this, he's an offensive guy. And it's one thing last week to come from behind against William & Mary, but you can't continue to do that, and you can't get field goals, let alone turnovers, to get down here near the goal line. Wildcat formation. Caesar's going to take the direct snap. Caesar's got it. Caesar in the Wildcats, a five-yard run, and we've got a ball game once again. Well, I like his counterpart, Mariani, on the other side. Deception is part of their game. You don't think they're as quick or as strong. You see the undersized Caesar, just five foot ten, but he's got great football instincts, much like Mariani for Montana. You get him in the open field, you actually see him limping a little bit. That's not a good sign for Villanova. Just a high football IQ. A little bit of room, and he'll make you pay. I wonder if that happened on the celebration. Extra point. Oof. No good. Misses wide left. Nick Yako just shanked it. So, instead of a four-point lead for Montana, it's still a five-point lead. Caesar scores from five yards out. When we come back, Villanova tries to keep that momentum on defense. All eyes on Caesar. Matt Caesar scored a touchdown a moment ago for Villanova. 
But it was a little bit gimpy going off to the side of the field. Normally, he's on kickoff coverage. But as the team is going out to kick this one off, Caesar has not gone out. Not a great sign for Villanova. But I don't know how much concern the training staff not even dealing with him. And knowing the way he plays and <laughs> but the fact that kid is a catcher on Villanova's baseball team and as you said earlier projected to be a high enough pick next season may not even play football may end up going into the baseball draft what a talented talented athlete three minutes 34 seconds remaining here in this first half Nick Yako will kick it off Javen Sambrano and Peter Wynn back deep for Montana. Short spinning kick. Fielded at the 17-yard line. Sam Prano scored a touchdown a moment ago. Flag is down on the field. Good return. He crosses the 50, but we'll have to sort it out. This is just the second time this first half that we have seen a marker down on the field. First play from scrimmage. We had a penalty, and now a penalty. And I like that in big games. Let the players decide the game. Let some of that extra contact go. During the return, holding number 60 on the receiving team. 10 yards, first down. Lake LeBeau called for that penalty. And wipes out a 35-yard return. And Blake, the backup center, you just get those arms extended at all. Very easy call. Not many penalties tonight, but that's the right call. Got a fistful of Ronnie Aiken's jersey. So the penalty actually cost Montana 34 yards. Pushed the football all the way back inside the 20 to the 19. Thomas Brooks Fletcher spelling Chase Reynolds in the backfield. He's next to Andrew Sell, looking out of the shotgun. Sell wants to throw. On the run, throws low, looking for Mariani. Let's send you the studio for what's coming up at halftime. Kevin, what do you got cooking? Thank you, Eric. Andre Ware will join us to talk about the best of the bowl season. Plus, we take a look at the 2009 catches of the year, and Danica drives Daytona. We'll see you at the half. Back to you, Eric and Brock. Thanks, Kevin. Andre Ware probably polishing up that Heisman as we speak. 20-year anniversary of his big night from the Houston Cougar. Second down and 10. Sell wants to throw. Again, out in space, complete Mariani. First down and more. Big first half continues for Mariani, a pickup of 19. consecutive year this FCS championship game has been played here in Chattanooga Bobby Hout trying to win the national title for the first time in three trips on his watch has lost twice before to Colonial Athletic Association teams back-to-back -back years here for this game for the Grizzlies last year they lost against Richmond Villanova has never played in this championship game Sell wants to throw Complete again. Someone's got to figure out where Mariani is. He's having a monster first half. Well, I tell you, Mark Rudin is trying to figure this thing out on the sidelines, and he blitzes. They throw a deep out. This time, rushing just three defenders and sell buys time. And you just can't say enough about a smart football player. And that's what Mark Mariani is. He realizes his quarterback's going to scramble. He breaks his route off. He shows him his numbers. And right now, that connection causing major problems for Villanova. Montana looking for the third national title, but their first since 2001. Villanova has never been to the promised land before, football-wise. Sell out of the flat. Mariani, his ninth catch of the first half, this time wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage by Ross Ventrone. Loss of two. Let's go down to the field for more on Mark Mariani. 
Kara. Guys, when we asked offensive coordinator Rob Finnessy what stands out most about Mary Annie for him, the word that he kept bringing up repeatedly, toughness, his resilience, the fact that he came in a walk-on, was a high school tennis star, tiny, grew three inches, gained 30 pounds, and now he's become an all-time Grizzly superstar. And this is his second consecutive championship game where he's had over 170 yards receiving. He loves his field. Complete underneath. This time they get it to one of their tight ends. Gain of just a couple of yards. That's uh, Steve Thaler on the catch. And this is a really big third down. Villanova got the ball to start the game. So Montana will get it back after half. Already up 14-9. They have a chance here to really double up on momentum if they can convert this third down and get the ball to start the second half as well. Third and seven. Here comes the blitz. Picked up nicely. Out pattern. Nobody home. John Dempsey, the strong safety was the closest man to the football. It'll bring up a fourth down. That's one of the rare times tonight where you see Sell really effective in the pocket. Montana's done a nice job picking up the blitz. He has been hit a few times. But that time, the feet got just a little bit quick in the pocket. There's a good shot of Coach Flugrad, the receiver coach. Actually came over first year from the University of Oregon. Trying to get quarterback and receiver on the same page. But Andrew, a very productive first half. 232 yards in the first 30 minutes. Punt team comes on. Wren takes a liner that's going to be downed inside the five. How about that for special teams work? It was a low line drive kick that was caught and dropped inside the five by Shan Schillinger. So the ball down at the two-yard line. There are two other NCAA fall championships to be decided this weekend. Tomorrow, 10-time national champion Mount Union meets Wisconsin Whitewater for an unprecedented fifth straight time in the Division III football championship at 11 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Then at 8 Eastern on ESPN2, it's Penn State against Texas for the women's volleyball championship. On first down, just trying to get away from the goal line, this is Angelo Babaro who cruises out to the nine-yard line, tackled by Tremaine Johnson. You know, this is our story here, the Division I FCS Championship, Montana, with a, a win for the ages in a snowstorm last week against App State, while Villanova doing what they do, slow and steady and winning the race last Friday in Philadelphia against the tribe of William & Mary. Villanova's had a very productive season in the first half this year, outscoring their opponents. 258 to 81 in the first half. Just down in four games out of their 14 this season. But back-to-back -back weeks. William & Mary was 10-0 a week ago. Tonight, Montana's made some explosive plays in the pass game. A couple turnover, a turnover in the red zone. Missed extra point. I guarantee you, Andy Talley, he's going to go in the halftime. He's going to look at the numbers. He's be, I don't expect him to be the wild man he was a week ago, as he told us he went into the halftime against William & Mary. He's got to be a little bit more precise in their technique. And somehow, Mark Reardon and his staff defensively got to slow down Montana's passing attack. And after the Montana timeout, second down and three. Whitney, the handoff. The ball is going to be close to the first down marker. It's going to be a little bit short. Severin Campbell on the tackle. It'll bring up a third down and one. There's Campbell, junior from Golden, Colorado. Interesting to note, Matt Caesar has not been on the field for the first two plays of this possession. Maybe Kara has more information. Kara, any word down there? 
Well, as Brock noted, the trainer was busy seeing to Chris Whitney, who had a cut on his arm. And I actually went up and asked Tyler, wait, excuse me, how's Matt Caesar doing? And he said, oh, is he hurt? Went up, Caesar said he was fine. He took a shot to his thigh, perhaps in the celebration, as you mentioned, or perhaps on the play before. But he should be back in the game. That was what I heard was that he was okay. And one of the challenges on a cold night like tonight, you get those thigh bruises. And one thing you don't want to do is just stand around. I bet you at halftime they'll put a heat pad on that, try to stretch it out. They're going to need him. Looks like he's going to come out on this third down play, but they're going to need his playmaking ability in the second half. You tell me Caesar should worry about it seizing up on their pole. Third down and one. Half a minute remaining here in the first half. Villanova just wants to get a first down. Run out the clock and get in that locker room. They get the first down. Whitney keeps it himself and picks up three. No, that was actually Caesar who picks up the three yards. Well, we thought this would be a toss-up kind of game. That's what both coaches told us. Very evenly matched. Both have been gritty and tough, both led by strong senior leadership. We're going to go to halftime with a very closely contested game. I think both sides are going to look at a few plays. A big third down conversion for Villanova that led to Caesars touchdown. And as I said earlier, Mark Reardon, that defensive staff for the Wildcats, have got to find a way, whether it's blitzing a little bit more, maybe playing some man coverage, and mixing up their pass defense in the second half. Well, that'll do it. Montana could have stopped the clock one more time. They choose not to. Grizzlies will go to the locker room with a five-point lead. 14-9 is our score at the half. Bobby Houck is standing by with our own Kara Capuano. Coach, a lot of big plays in this first half for Montana, many belonging to Mark Mariani. How is he having so much success in this game? Well, it's, it, it, some of their coverage, they're, in a, they're putting a lot of pressure on their corners, and we're able to take advantage of it a little bit. So, you know, as long as they're going to play that way, then we've got to probably throw it because they're playing a lot of run defense. It is the closely contested game that you predicted. <laughs> what do you want to see improved by your team in the second half? Well, we've been a good second half team. We've been really kind of slow starting on the season, so it's nice to have a lead go in the locker room and hopefully we can come out and have a great second half and, uh, and win this thing. Coach, thanks so much. Right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Kara. Bobby Houck in Montana looking for perfection, looking for a 15-0 season and the school's third national championship. They've got a good start. 14-9, Montana on top of Villanova at the half. Now let's send you to Kevin Nagandi with the College Football Halftime Report. NCAA Division I College Football Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. 30 minutes in the books and so far so good for the Montana Grizzlies. The number one seed on top of Villanova by a score of 14 to 9. Montana looking for their third national title while Villanova looking for their very first. Brock Hewitt, I'm Eric Collins. In case you're just joining us, the story in the first half was the offense for both sides. In total, nine plays of 20 yards or more. Were you surprised at how much offense yeah, we had? Yeah, a little bit. The weather didn't slow it down at all. And these are both pretty sound defenses, but nearly 550 yards between the two of them. And Villanova better do something about Mark Mariani in that second half. Well, Villanova head coach Andy Talley standing by with our Kara Capuano. Kara. Coach, the guys just mentioned it. All of the big plays in the first half between these two teams. Do you anticipate more of that in the second half? Yeah, I do. I mean, two really good football teams. And, you know, their quarterback's on fire right now. And Mariani's a great receiver. So, and Caesar's a great runner and receiver. So, anything can happen in this game. You told us you kind of went off at the guys at the half last week. What was the temperament like in there, and what did you tell them? Well, it was 14-9. It wasn't 13-0, so I didn't feel too bad. I think we have a shot. We were just settling them down, and I think we got the jitters out of our system. We're ready to go. Good luck, Coach. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Eric? Thank you so much, Kara. Let's take a look at those uh, first-half numbers. Both teams 
just with radically good success offensively, both with over eight yards per play in the first 30 minutes. The big issue for Villanova was their lone turnover that came in the red zone. Chris Whitney throwing an interception. And it turned out to be a 14-point swing, an interception that led to a touchdown being scored for Montana. Villanova did score one touchdown, but they missed the extra point. That's why they had those nine points instead of ten. On the return, this is Javen Sambrano. He scored a touchdown in the first half. He twirls out to the 27-yard line of return of 16 yards. Let's take a look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by Home Depot. And nine receptions, 178 yards in that first half for Mariani. And you heard Bobby Howe going into halftime say the way Villanova was playing defense, a lot of burden on their corners. Well, those corners and those safeties better tackle better. Over half of Mariani's yards came after contact, including the touchdown. If you're going to play that zone coverage and leave your corners in those one-on-one -on -one situations, you better limit the yards after catch. Wow. 92 yards after catch of the 178 total for Mariani. In case you're wondering, the FCS championship game for yards receiving, Randy Moss. Formerly of Marshall, he had 220 back in the late 90s when he was playing for the Thundering Herd. First down carry, Chase Reynolds. Reynolds on the carry. Picks up two yards. Marantlin Johnson tackle with the tackle. 58, Johnson. Montana out of the big sky. A perfect 14-0 so far this season. A Villanova out of the CAA. They've lost once. That was October 10th against New Hampshire. They avenged that loss with a playoff win in the quarterfinal round. Tight end. Baylor with the grab. He's close to the first down marker. Looks to be just a whisker short. Some uh, injury news. Let's send it down to the sidelines. Kara, what do you have? Well, guys, I know that you've mentioned the tough guyness of Tim Kakuka, the defensive end for Villanova, fractured his thumb in the first half. They casted it at halftime, and he does expect to play in the second half. Wow. Kakuka playing his final collegiate game. Wants to make the most of it. What happened there? Andrew Sell. Yeah, Kukuku, uh, Kukuka is one of the real tough guys on this defense. The senior, he is not going to come out of the final game of his career. There you see the cast on the fractured thumb. You'll have to watch how effective he is in getting off blocks. An undersized guy that uses those hands so critically to shed blocks. We'll keep an eye on that in the second half. Kukuka stays on the field as the punt coverage team comes on for Montana. Ren. Low kick, bounces inside the 30, inside the 25, and inside the 20. Good little wiggle on that punt, got an extra 15 yards of roll. But Villanova will take over for the first time here in the third quarter. Capital One Bowl Week begins on ESPN tomorrow with a couple of games, 4.30 Eastern time. Ryan Matthews, he's a good one. Fresno State running back takes on the Wyoming Cowboys in the New Mexico Bowl. Then at 8 Eastern time, Central Florida Golden Knights taking on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights in the St. Petersburg Bowl, presented by Beepo Brady's Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN360.com tomorrow. Out of the shotgun, Chris Whitney, Jr. from Philadelphia, calling out the cadence. Hands it off. Angelo Babaro lowers the head and gets out close to the 25-yard line. A pickup of five. Tackle made by Brandon Fisher and Shan Schillinger. What are your thoughts on Chris Whitney in the first half? Oh, he's a gamer. It's not pretty. And the times that ball is going to slip out of his hands and sail. But he made the big play on the third and 12. The deep ball down the field to Caesar. And he does just enough to win football games, 24-29 in his career. Little option, Whitney keeps it, gets the first down. Whitney doesn't look great when he's running that football, but usually gets pretty good results. Now he's a big body and he likes contact. And I'll tell you, Sam Benuto, his offensive coordinator, told us a week ago, he said his toughness, his, he doesn't slide, he doesn't shy from tackles, and really his toughness sets the tone for our entire offense.
And there are just some guys you look at and you say they have the it factor. He may not have all of it as a passer, but as far as his intangibles and his leadership, oh, they're top notch. Fresh set of downs. Whitney out of the gun. Here comes the blitz. Picked up. And Whitney gets out of dodge. Plenty of room to run. Left side. Crosses the 50. Inside the 45. He doesn't just go out of bounds like your ordinary quarterback. He lowers the head and gets a couple more. 22 yards. And that exemplifies his play. The play breaks down. The coverage is tight down the field. And you're going to see he'll tuck it and run. And how about the fifth-year senior, Brandon Harvey, peeling back and unloading on Alex Shaw. This is a pretty tough Villanova football team. Down 14-3. They're not going to panic. They get in that first half, get in that touchdown to close the gap. Whitney's second run of at least 20 yards. Out to Caesar. Good to see him in the game. Makes the first man miss and gets to the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Schillinger. And there is a man down for Villanova. We'll get back to that in a moment. Now, one thing that jumps out when you watch film of these Villanova receivers is they are very, very physical. And Brandon Harvey just tees off on Alex Shaw, who can't see. And that is an ear hole job. But that little swing route, and Caesar still looks like he's in some pain. But both Harvey, Norman White, if you're going to play a receiver within this system, you better be willing to lock on defenders and play physical football. Right tackle for Villanova. Jonathan Bugley was slow to get up on that last play. It'll be interesting to see if he's okay. Full start, 82 offense. Five yards, second down. Called on the tight end, Chris Farmer. There's Bugley, senior from Newburyport, Massachusetts. They are, you can't even say they're thin up front for Villanova. They have generally no backups. They're going to have to burn a redshirt year of John Bucci if one of their tackles can't play. Bucci hadn't played all season long, but he is going to give up the redshirt year and play if needed if either Bugley or Ajalana goes down today. Quick out, complete Norman White, sophomore, with the catch, pushed out of bounds by Andrew Swink. And Chidozi Equizor was their starting right tackle, but against Holy Cross, the first playoff game, he tore his knee up. That moved the true freshman Dan Shiree into playing that right guard and bumped Bugley to right tackle. And you're right, Eric. Outside of the freshman Bucci, there is literally no one else to play tackle on the sidelines. Third down at three. Whitney. Good catch made out in space. Dorian Wells has the first down. That's a tough throw and a gain of 12. That's back-to-back -back throws now where Chris Whitney's gaining a little bit of confidence. A 64% passer on the season. So it's not as if he's incapable of being accurate. And these last two throws, much more efficient, as you said, hitting Wells on stride. Montana, again, in the third down situation, brings the blitz, plays man-to-man, -man, and Wells too much for Fisher in the flat. Whitney keeps it. And Whitney, again, just keeps the feet moving and picks up nine first down yards. Jace Palmer jumps on his back. Tackle by number 40, D.J. Palmer. Yeah, I really think Andy Talley, Talley hit it on the head yesterday with us when he said, listen, Chris Whitney, yeah, he struggled a little bit last week, and, and I nearly pulled him. Coach has talked some sense into me, said, you got to live with the negative plays. Chris will make some negative plays, but his positive will so far outweigh them and you're starting to see it after that interception. Chris Whitney has really responded. Right side, the ball, Stone, but I think he's got enough for the first down. Eric Stahl, the transfer from Idaho State, along with Jace Palmer on the tackle. And it is enough for the first down. Yeah, this game means so much to the ball. Junior from the Youngstown area of Ohio, economics major, a couple of rounds ago, wrote a letter to the team that he read out loud the day before the game, had tears in his eyes, telling his teammates what they meant to him, what this game meant to him, what the season was all about, and they've been playing inspired football ever since. Marker down. Prior to the snap, false start. 50 offense. Five yards, first down. 
You know, one of the best ways to slow down an offense, and Andy Talley knows this, an offensive guy, he's thrown the ball all throughout his career as a head coach, and he knows the best way to slow down Mark Mariani on that other side, and Montana's offense that had nearly 300 yards. Well, that's to control the ball offensively. Exactly what Villanova has done on this initial drive of the second half. Eight plays, now the ninth play of this drive, and those Grizzlies, those offensive players standing on the sidelines. Whitney with the pump fake. Running out of time. Palmer can't pull him down now. He does. Palmer rope ties him and brings him down at the 30-yard line. A loss of nine. Yeah, you run those little screen routes to your receivers, those little bubble routes, they call them. And that time, Sam Venuto wanted him to pump fake that and throw it deep down the field. But Montana on the back end, they don't bite. And you saw Bugler go down earlier, step slow. And Jace Palmer does the rest. 17 sack in his career. He's the most prolific sacker on this Montana team. Slant. Caesar's got it. Inside the 10 at the 5. It's a first down for Villanova. Whitney threw a laser. And they pick up the first down. Yeah, Chris Whitney playing with a lot of confidence right now. First Caesar does a nice job of getting inside of Schillinger. And Stoll, who was the other safety in the other quarter, half of the field could not get in front of that inside seam. Caesar does it all. You'll see him. You've seen him tonight. Run the ball. Catch the ball. He'll throw the ball. He's just your all-around star football player. And now he's in the Wildcat formation. Caesar wants to throw. No one's open. Reverses his field. And he gets down to the one. Caesar's been special out of that Wildcat formation this year, not just as a runner, but also as a passer. A perfect three for three so far this year, but nobody open decides to run it and gets it down to the one. Now that's really nice composure. It shows a little bit of that football acumen we've been talking about. How often you see guys in that position try to force the issue. Caesar doesn't. Again, shows off some of that speed and athleticism to go all the way across the field and continue to sustain this drive in what looks like a tired Montana defense right now. Two tight end formation and movement. One of those tight ends on the left side, Eric Predash. False start, 85 offense. Five yards, second down. Well, for every couple of steps forward, they take a couple of steps back. Third false start penalty on Andy Talley's bunch this drive. And remember, they had just one penalty the entire first half. Three penalties on this drive alone. Because fortunately, if you're a Wildcat fan, all of them have been of the garden variety, just five yards of pop. Caesar, one of the best threats for Villanova, not on the field on second and goal. Ball has the football. Gets a couple back. It's going to bring up third down and goal. And this drive now over seven minutes in length. And really the red zone's been the difference tonight. Villanova has moved the ball from the 20 to 20. They had to settle for a field goal the first time. The turnover the second. The touchdown that really closed the gap, changed the nature of that first half. And now a real opportunity to cap off a very, very productive Try for them to open the second half. Are you surprised Caesar's not in the game? I am a little bit, yes. Whitney wants to throw, has a man wide open. Touchdown, Chris Farmer. Whitney's what a time for Chris Farmer to score his first collegiate touchdown. Villanova leads for the first time. see Farmer he's the end man and that's just a blown coverage by the Grizzlies and the Grizzlies they play a lot of zone coverage that time Farmer allows the outside receivers to clear off on inside slants and he should never be that wide open but works his way as you said for his first collegiate touchdown Chris Farmer has just six catches so far this year 
Had a big one, yes, last week in the fourth quarter. Gets a touchdown here. You reap what you sow. The Farmer scores, and Villanova leads by two. Chris Farmer, the junior from West Catholic High School in Philadelphia, scores one for the local team. Capping off a 13-play, 81-yard touchdown drive. Farmer, his first collegiate touchdown, and Villanova, they lead by two. And Nova, nice job on that drive, in particular, of overcoming penalties. Three false start penalties, and Chris Whitney has responded. After throwing that interception, all he's done is gone six for six, converted on third downs. He's been a little streaky at times, but right now his game is on. And you just see him much more comfortable in his demeanor, much more confident, and that offense responded. That was an 81-yard drive for Andy's tally team, where they picked up 96 yards. Kept going back because of three false start penalties. So an impressive possession for the Wildcats. Nick Yako with the kickoff. From the five-yard line, Javen Sambrano. And Sambrano skips across the 25 to the 28. That's where the Grizzlies will start on offense. Courtesy of Mr. Farmer, Villanova up by a pair. Will the top-seeded Grizzlies answer? Stick around. NCAA Division I College Football Championship. Brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. And Pizza Hut, announcing the holiday meal deal. It's plenty of food to feed your crowd, only at Pizza Hut. They call Chattanooga the scenic city. There's a lot to see in these parts. That's Ruby Falls, not too far away from Lookout Mountain, which you can get to the top of and see five different states from Lookout Mountain. Right now, anything you'd ever want to see is right here on this field. Finley Stadium, Davenport Field, the Division I FCS Championship, and it's been a doozy. 16 to 14, Villanova on top of Montana for the first time. Grizzlies trying to answer. Out in space, the tight end, Dan Bowden, with the grab. Let's send you to the studio. Kevin Nagandi standing by. Kevin. Eric, we want to remind our viewers over on ESPN, the Bucks are taking on the Cavs. Brandon Jennings, you could look at the rookie, what he's done so far this season. LeBron James and the Cavs have won four straight. Bron Bron working towards a triple-double, 22-9-8 already. Cavs up by 10. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Kevin. Phil Matus and that defense for Villanova. Second down at four. Give to Reynolds. Drives the left side. Gets the first down. Barrels out to the 48. Tackle made by John Dempsey. A pickup of 13. Yeah, and both of these teams tonight have highlighted the blocking as Villanova's wide receivers. But Mark Mariani on that play showing if you're going to be a Grizzly wide receiver. And Bobby Howe told us this yesterday. You are going to block. That sets up those big plays in the run game. An imperative here. The Grizzlies have had just five offensive plays in the last 45 minutes of real time. Important for them to rest their defense and get it going on offense. Mariani has not made a catch here in the third quarter. Stuck on nine catches for 178 yards. Reynolds again. This time wrapped up close to the line of scrimmage. Middle backer Marquise Kirkland, the first man to wrap him up. Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN Sunday night. Damian Fletcher and the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi playing in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl for the second consecutive year. This time around, taking on Middle Tennessee, led by Dwight Dasher. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN360.com Sunday, 8:30 Eastern. New Orleans Bowl pitting the Sun Belt Conference against Conference USA. Out of the backfield, Reynolds has it. And Reynolds met head on and dropped at the 46 yard line after a pickup of four. Once again, Kirkland, the man on the spot. And that's a little bit better tackling. We highlighted Mariani's plays in the first half, how 92 of his 170 yards receiving were yards after catch. 
Critical for Villanova, and there you see the rushing production of Chase Reynolds. Critical for Villanova with the way they play this scheme. You must tackle in space. Andrew Sell out of the shotgun. Trying to convert a third and four. Nothing doing. Calls his own number. Gets the first down. I think. Gonna depend on the spot. Jacob Wade made the tackle in space. We'll put it right down on that marker you see on our screen. They're gonna have to call the chains in and see if this is indeed enough for the first down. And Andrew Sell doing his best Chris Whitney impersonation. Doesn't see anything down the field. Better coverage. There's Villanova defenders locking onto the receivers a little bit better than they did in the first half. Sell sees a lane, tries to get those pads down and move the chains. And they do indeed have it. Bobby Howell looking for his first national title. Seventh season. Working the sidelines with the Grizzly. 80 wins to his credit and seven Big Sky Championship. Been the conference coach of the year three times, but he's lost in the FCS Championship game the only two times he's made it here. 2004 against James Madison and last year against the Richmond Spiders. Both teams out of the Colonial Athletic Association, just like Villanova. Give to Reynolds. Tough sled here in the second half for Mr. Reynolds. Met with force by Marquise Kirkland. Thomas Weaver also in on the stop. Yeah, Mark Reardon told us very honestly, he said Marquise Kirkland has to have a big game for us. And he certainly is. He is a downhill guy many times in 3-4s. You look at him in the NFL, and you can imagine the teams with the 250-pound inside linebackers. When you are uncovered, those guards coming downhill at you, you need some beef in the middle. You need a guy that will thump and react. And Kirkland tonight been very, very active in the run game. Play fake. Sell. Throws it over the middle, a dangerous pass, incomplete. He was looking for Tyler Palmer, but John Dempsey, the defensive back for Villanova, probably the closest man to the football. And that was a dangerous throw down the field. I was waiting for a little play-action pass. That's one thing we've not seen a lot of tonight, especially in two-back. Many times, two-backs have been on the field, and it's been heavy, heavy run that time. Rob Fennessy tries to dial up the play action pass down the field. And once again, Villanova a much better feed here in the second half on this Montana passing game. This is that weird part of the field where it may be four down territory for Montana. Third down at 10. Blitz is on. Sell. Down. Kirkland got him. That drive was all about Marquise Kirkland. Count the bodies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven come into the picture. Mark Reardon really sticks to his roots. He says, I'm a blitzer. I like to attack. Third and ten, he brings the house. Sean Wren, nice punt. It's going to roll inside the five and be downed at about the four and a half yard line. Mr. Wren earned the scholarship with a beautiful punt. 45 yards, no return. And Villanova pinned up against their own goal line. But at least they've got the football back, courtesy of number nine from Syracuse, New York, Marquise Kirkland. Fantastic defensive possession there for him. on top of Montana by a score of 16 to 14. 51 ticks remaining third quarter. Kara Capuano standing by with some Villanova football royalty. Kara. That's right, Eric. I have Brian Finner, an 11-year receiver. He's with the Falcons the last 10, and you played for Andy Talley. What does it mean to you to see your coach with a chance to play for the title? It's awesome um, for him to be out here and keep pushing on and 
Uh, the, the success he's had throughout his career at Villanova has been unbelievable. He brought the program back in 85 and has been the staple here forever. So um, it's awesome to see him get a chance to win it. I will point out that since Brian came down to the sidelines here in the second half, Villanova has made its comeback. What do you like about this year's Wildcat squad? They got a lot of guys that kind of just step up and make plays for them. Um, number four, Caesar, is a heck of a football player. Quarterback's a tough kid. And then uh, the defense has been strong all year. So hopefully we can continue to keep this lead, 16-14 now, and, uh, and uh, keep it in the fourth quarter. Brian, thanks. We'll let you watch the rest of the game. All right, Kara, you got it. Eric, you... Yeah, and I should tell you that Brian Finneran is the only receiver ever to win the Walter Payton Award for the best player at the FCS level. Good knowledge. Thank you, Kara. He was teammates with Brian Westbrook for a season with Villanova. On the first down carry, Aaron Ball still on his feet. Look at this fella out to the 25-yard line before Schillinger throws him out of bounds. But a big-time gain on first and 10 to the four-yard line, a rip of 18 yards. And what a statement there to come out of your own goal line. You get the excellent punt, special team step up for Montana. They pin Villanova back, but you just see this Villanova offensive line is starting to get onto these linebackers, locking onto the defensive line. And Montana better rise up in their front seven and make a play, or Bernal Villanova will continue to control this game. Kind of an awkward handoff there. Whitney gives it to Bavaro, who picks up two. You talked about the size of Montana's guys up front. Well, Villanova, they're pretty large themselves. Ijelana, the All-American left tackle, 320, 290, 295. And I really give that offensive line credit in the third quarter. They sustained that drive, most of it on the ground, and right now they're controlling the momentum of this football game. They'll drop a tape into the VCR, press record, wake up the kids. We've got a good one right now. You're not going to want to miss the final 15 minutes through three quarters. We've seen quality offense, and most recently, we've seen good defense played by Villanova. 15 minutes left. scored the quarter's only points a touchdown for the junior tight end Chris Farmer and they lead by two 16 14 as we begin the fourth quarter Villanova has the football second down and eight with Brock Good and Kara Capuano I'm Eric Collins Vision one FCS championship game Villanova has never won this championship in its football history out in space, Caesar has the football, makes the first man miss, and barrels forward. It's going to bring up a third down and short. A tackle made by Brandon Fisher, son of Tennessee Titans head coach Jeff Fisher. Gain of seven. And now up over 360 yards of total offense for Villanova. Quite a different story. You see a good shot of Brandon Fisher, the undersized linebacker, converted safety. Very smart. You'd expect that. A heady football player. And this is a big third one for Brandon and his team. Villanova really controlled the ball in that third quarter. Montana must find a way to get off the field. Villanova converted their last four third downs. Caesar in the Wildcat formation. And Caesar picks his hole. Very patient runner. And he gets the first down. You know, it can be demoralizing on a defense. When you get the good special teams play, as I said earlier, to pin an offense inside the five, and the first play is a 20-yarder right up the gut. Those third and one situations, just controlling the line of scrimmage. You know, Montana right now physically has got to find a way to get off blocks and tackle better in space. Whitney back as the quarterback. Keeps it, goes left side. Lowers the head. Oh, man. With some strength, still on his feet. May have rattled the molars of Tremaine Johnson. You don't see quarterbacks hit like that. 
Uh, he's just a gamer. I, I mean, the kid is a little bit unorthodox in some of his fundamentals. He's not a four or five guy. The ball doesn't come out always real pretty. But he's just a football player. Brian Finneran said it himself. I mean, these guys just make the plays, and he's done it all season long. There he scrambles. The mouthpiece actually flies out of his mouth upon contact. This team follows his lead, and ever since that interception, he and this offense have really responded. Wildcat on second and one. Caesar, right side. Caesar. Oh, gets a great block from Whitney. Inside the 20, down to the 13-yard line. Whitney's setting everything in sight. He springs Caesar for a 40-yard gain. This Wildcat's been very, very good for Villanova. Watch Whitney come into your picture right there. That is a six foot three, 200 pound corner in Trumaine Johnson. Not just the receiver's block, even the quarterbacks when they're split out at wide receiver. They're asked to block. You see more and more of that speed out of the conference's offensive player of the year, Matt Caesar. Two consecutive plays. Trumaine Johnson's been decleated by the quarterback, Whitney. Now Whitney using the shifty legs to get down to the six yard line. Austin Mullins on the tackle. I think I made the point earlier, early in this game, first quarter, about the edge, the point of attack. When you play a 4-3 defense against this scheme and all of that outside run that Villanova has, you better be solid at the edge, be at your end, be at your linebacker, whoever has force. And right now, Villanova consistently winning that edge point of attack and thus controlling the game. Villanova with five times the amount of yards here in the second half compared to Montana. Ball. Still got the feet moving. Close to the first down marker. Looks like he'll be short. There's a good shot of the true freshman. Shiree, I love Villanova starting this game 0 for 4 on third down since 5 for 5. Chris Whitney, we saw last week against William & Mary, a very similar situation inside the five-yard line. Andy Talley played to win. I expect this to again be two-down territory for Villanova. Caesar on the sideline. Whitney, the handoff. Babaro. I don't know. I don't know. The spot not very generous right out of the get-go. Looks like he's going to be short, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Yeah, this is a gutsy call. And Andy Talley last week, a very similar situation. Had a fourth and one, and he ran the quarterback sneak with Chris Whitney. This is a little different because now all of a sudden a field goal here forces Montana to score a touchdown. I asked Andy Talley last week about those fourth down calls and he said very frankly we play to win i wanted to play to win the game and we'll see what decision he makes here with still a lot of time left in this fourth quarter and he's got some extra time to think about it because his tight end chris farmer is down on the field being looked at farmer scored a touchdown in that third quarter first of his career but now being looked at Andy Talley looking on as Chris Farmer down on the field. Not sure what happened here. There he is. That's his own man, Babaro. He gets him right in the chest. Hmm. Andy Talley now in his 25th season with Villanova. He came to Philadelphia after a fantastic five-year run up in the north country of uh, New York, he was the head coach for the St. Lawrence Saints, a Division Three team. Decided to come down to Villanova after they'd been dark for five years. Howie Long graduated in 1979, one of the finest football players in Villanova history. And they stopped playing football. For five years, there was no football played in Villanova. They decided to bring the program back, and they wanted Andy Talley to start him back up again. And now just a dream season, 25 years into the job, a chance to win his first national title. And what's the decision here? 
Uh, he played the win last week, and the way they have controlled this third quarter, he's making the same decision again. They're going to go for it. Caesar is in the game, and it looks like this is going to be a wildcat to Caesar. He's going to take the shotgun snap. Fullback Canty next to him in the shotgun. Caesar left side. Lowers the head. First down. Touchdown. Second touchdown of the ball game for Caesar. And the lead swells to eight. You hear all the time in football, low pad level is gonna win. And even though you're five foot ten and 195 pounds, watch the dipping of the hips. His pads are lower than the Montana defender and that leg strength. We talked about it earlier. That leg strength, those catcher's legs that are very powerful, drives right through that tackle. Quite possibly, Matt Caesar's final college game, just a junior, but a good chance of him getting drafted high in the Major League Baseball draft next spring and foregoing his senior year of football. If this is indeed his final game, all hail Caesar. He's going out with a bang. The man down on the field for Montana is Josh Stuber, redshirt freshman who was the man trying to tackle Caesar in the open field. Now, there are actually two Grizzlies that got beat up on that fourth and one situation. There you see Molens, he's limping off. Stuber, it looks like a shoulder there immediately went to the ground, wincing. He took the, the low blow, the low delivery of the shoulder pad of Caesar, ran through that arm tackle. And Villanova's just been simply the more physical team here in the second half. Now for more on the physical, Matt Caesar, let's go down to Kara. Kara. Guys, there's a whole side to Matt Caesar that you don't even know. He is a caring young man. He, like so many players nationally, not only in Andy Talley's program, has registered to be a national bone marrow donor. They found a match. On January 4th, Matt Caesar will have a procedure to donate his bone marrow to a one-year-old girl and save her life. It's incredible. They found a match about a month ago, and they thought that they're going to need to donate. Back in November, he was going to have to miss a game. Matt Caesar said, no question, I'll do it. Turned out that they didn't need to do it until the early part of January, so he's going to get a chance to fulfill his dream and try and play for this national championship. And right now, it's looking like it's going to be pretty promising. 11.04 remaining. Matt Caesar and Villanova. They've scored 20 unanswered points. Largest lead of the day, 23-14. Festivities going on here in Chattanooga over the last couple of days at an awards ceremony yesterday. Will Thompson, the winner of the Elite 88 Award, what that is, the student athlete from each of the 88 NCAA championships with the highest grade point average wins the award. Will Thompson with a 3.97 GPA. His major is accounting. He is a senior from Glen Arm, Maryland. He is the long snapper for the Villanova Wildcats. Congratulations to him. Not only uh, exceptional on the football field, but exceptional in the classroom. 3.975, I guess is the uh, way you round it off. Now, no rest for the weary. Matt Caesar just scored his second touchdown of the game, and now he's on the kickoff coverage unit. Twenty unanswered points for Villanova. 23 14 is their lead. Yako with the kick. Down to the 11. Sandrano. Good head of steam and crosses the 35 yard line. Time for Montana to jumpstart this offense 
They're averaging just 2.8 yards per play here in the second half after averaging over 8 yards per play in the first half. You know, Bobby Houck was very honest with us yesterday. He said, this is not the most talented team I've had in Missoula, but this is a very strong senior class and a very mentally tough crew. There's no giving these guys. You remember back their first playoff game, San, San, South Dakota State was up 48 to 21 late in the third quarter. Montana's been a very, very good fourth quarter team, and they're going to need to deliver here in the final 10 minutes. And Montana scored 40 unanswered in that game against the Jackrabbits. Nice pass complete to Chase Reynolds out of the backfield. Pickup of nine on first down. And Brock, Andrew Sell has not been able to complete a pass to Mariani here in the second half. Not had many opportunities, been on the sideline an awful lot. Villanova's paying him a little bit more attention. You at least see a little bit of press coverage here. More than likely to bell off into that zone. Villanova, some nice adjustments in the second half. Out in the flat, complete. That's a first down. Sam Gratton, redshirt freshman from Billings, Montana. Pace has been picked up a little bit here by Montana. And I like that move. Establish a little bit of tempo. Just like we said with Villanova. There were eight minutes to go in that second quarter. Lots of time left in this game. No reason for Montana to panic. All three timeouts. They have moved the ball. Stick to their plan. Sell in trouble. Escapes. But can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Terrence Thomas, first team all CAA with the tackle, a loss of a pair. And I talked about Villanova just being the more physical group offensively. They beat up Montana's front seven and defensively here this second half. You've seen it from all sorts of different people. Marquise Kirkland, Terrence Thomas, Thomas Weaver. He's very, very active on both sides of that line of scrimmage. Sell to Reynolds, behind the line of scrimmage, Kukuka. No, that's Terrence Thomas with the tackle. Second consecutive play behind the line of scrimmage for Thomas. Just remarkable, the second half turnaround. Andy Talley, the last couple weeks, has been a team not trailing very often this season. They have the last two weeks, and that third quarter has been awfully good to Villanova and how they've responded out of the tunnel in the second half. Third and a bunch. Sell. Complete. Oh, dropped. Great defense played by Eric Loper, separating Javen Zambrano from the football. Zambrano had it, had it up for the first down, and Loper knocked it away. That's Zambrano on Loper, the touchdown in the first half on the slant route, this time the deep in cut, and the freshman says, I'll put my helmet right on the football, I'll separate it on that third down, and force a critical punt here for the Grizzlies. Loper burned for a 98-yard touchdown against William & Mary a week ago. Makes a good defensive play here. Ball goes into the end zone. It's a touchback, a punt of 49 yards, but just a net of 29. It'll be filling over football at the 20-yard line. Trying to mix and block when we come back. NCAA Division I College Football Championship is presented on ESPN2 by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up. Welcome back, everyone. Chattanooga, Tennessee. The Division I FCS Championship game. Villanova trying to become the second consecutive CAA team to win the national title. This is how we've gotten to the point we are now. It was all Mark Mariani in that first half. 176 yards receiving. It was through the air. 250 yards for Montana. But since then, it's been all Villanova on the ground. 290 yards rushing. You sprinkle in a couple passes here and there. But Matt Caesar showing off the power in those legs. Whenever you can run for 290 yards, well, I don't care how many receiving yards you have, you really put the pressure on the defense, and Villanova's certainly done that in the second half. 
Mariani, nine catches, 178 yards in that first half, has been shut out here in the second half. Well, Caesar has stepped up his game. He's already over 100 yards on the ground. He's got 68 receiving yards. First down at 10. Wildcats have the football. Whitney keeps it. And Whitney crosses the 30. Eric Stoll jumps on his back. A pickup of 11 yards. Let's head you to the studio for an update. Kevin, what's going on? Eric, here's what's happening on Sports Center right now. Danica Patrick got a taste of Daytona driving a stock car. She completed five laps before rain washed out today. She's scheduled to make her stock car debut at Daytona in February. The Mariners continue to be the most active team in the offseason, acquiring Milton Bradley from the Cubs for pitcher Carlos Silva. Bradley hit just 257 with 40 RBI in his only season in Chicago. Next Sports Center coming up after the game. Also reminding you, coming up on ESPN, the Wizards facing the Warriors. Antoine Jameson and company have dropped six straight by a total of 14 points. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Kevin. First down, little option out to Caesar. And Caesar has about 12 yards. That's 313 yards rushing now. One more yard. Whitney will go over 100. Caesar well over 100. Craig Paulson, the defensive coordinator from Montana yesterday. What are your keys to win? He said, very simply, we must control the run and limit the explosive plays. They've done neither. And that's why right now, with seven minutes to go, Villanova very clearly looking down the barrel of their first ever national championship in football. Why has Villanova had such rampant success here in the second half offensively? Well, what have you seen time and again? That option play has been unstoppable. They've gotten to the edge at will. That offensive line's been dominant. We've not talked enough about Ben Isolana. Grant Clouser, Brian Brannigan, Dan Shiree, Jonathan Bugley battling through in injury. All of those big guys up front have really paved the way for Matt Caesar to make plays. He's done it in the passing game. Told you he's got 68 yards on four catches, but most of the damage has been done with those legs, either taking the direct snap or a pitch out on the option. Caesar. He now has 129 yards rushing. It looks like Bill Holmes is going to have two 100-yard rushers from a receiver and their quarterback. Caesar's got 129 yards on the ground. Whitney's got 99. Second down and nine. First man through, Bavaro. Explodes across the 50, picks up four yards. George Mercer on the stop. Now a critical third down. Bobby Hawks team, they've got to get off this field. Out looking for his first ever national title. Knows he needs the football back. And this defense has been on the field an awful lot. I know they rotate a lot of people through, but an undersized group has really felt the brunt all night long of a Villanova team that's been downhill at them time and time and time again. Three receivers, bottom of your screen. Caesar's the man in the slot. Ball has the football, has the first down. Inside the 35 to the 33. Sean Lepsock brings him down, but another big first down, a gain of 16. And it's just demoralizing. They're third down situations. They're a fourth and one situation. They're coming out of the goal line. We talked about the yards after catch in the first half for Montana, the number of missed tackles. Well, that's been reversed here in the second half. A defense that's been on the field an awful lot is all of a sudden starting to reach with a lot of arm tackles. And whether it's Matt Caesar, or Aaron Ball, Chris Whitney, all of these Wildcats who run that football will run through arm tackles. Wildcat formation, Caesar. Remember, he can throw the football. He's going to take the direct snap. And Caesar with room. For a guy who weighs 195 pounds, he seems like the strongest man in the room. And for a guy that battled a five ruse in that first half, he's feeling no real effects. The adrenaline is clearly running through him. All of these Wildcats can taste what's on the horizon. And look at the clock. Watch a well-coached football team. You said it earlier. Gun coming out of break. Well, they milk this clock every single time they snap the ball with less than five seconds on that play clock. And the numbers now are just getting silly in Andy Talley. He may not show it, but I guarantee in his belly, after 30 years as a head coach, 25 years here at Villanova, 
He is terribly excited inside. High snap give to Babaro. Brock, this is the fourth consecutive year that the Colonial Athletic Association has had a team in the championship game. Sixth time in the last seven years the team from the CAA has made it this far. Andy Talley's bunch, along with James Madison, Richmond, Delaware, UMass over the years, have been so good on the national stage. Why is that? Well, I think Andy Talley said it best, and I totally agree with him. Three things. Number one, very good quarterback play. And you've seen that tonight after a shaky first quarter from Chris, Chris Whitney. He's been spot on. Number two, speed. Very, very fast kids they can recruit. And that's the third one, recruiting base. You look up and down Virginia in the East Coast and just the hotbeds. Uh oh Mount of town. Snap is high. Whitney just has to fall on it. That knocks him quite possibly out of field goal range. It's a loss of 19. And one of the rare mistakes here, really, over the last 30 minutes of this football game, a high snap from Brian Brannigan. It is still wet. That field is very, very wet. Now you just open the door a little bit. And I'll say it again. This Montana gets me through. Down 48 to 21. Late in the third quarter against South Dakota State. They have come back before. And let's see if that play is as critical error as it appears it may be. Conservative play call. Option. Whitney keeps it himself. Wrapped up by Alex Shaw at the 30-yard line. Do you try a long bomb of a field goal here, or do you try and pooch it? Well, let's see. First off, Bobby Hout decides to call a timeout in this situation. He's got three left. And he decides to, right now, let this clock burn. So it's going to get to 2.30 with all three timeouts still remaining. Sam Venuto, offensive coordinator. He's been connected at the hip with Andy Talley for 15 seasons. A lot of continuity on that staff. That's what Andy Talley says, one of the keys to his program. You know, I think a real credit to the staff. I and mean, I got a chance last night at the awards show to run into a number of the coaches from the Colonial Athletic Association. All of them said, funny thing about Andy Talley is for 25 years, he loved to throw the ball. That was his M.O. He loved to throw it all over the field. And really, he and his staff have taken on the identity of their players. And that's what great coaches do. They look at the talent they have, and they morph their systems to work to their players' talents. And Chris Whitney is gutsy. He's gritty. He's tough. Now, he really sets the tone. Matt Caesar's a difference maker. And credit to Andy Talley and Sam Venuto to realize it, not be so steadfast that we need to throw it all over the field and play to their players' strengths. Dominic Skarnecchia, who was brilliant a week ago against William & Mary, looking for the pooch. Fair catch called for and made by Mary Annie at the seven-yard line, maybe the eight. Punt of 28 yards, no return. Now the onus falls on the Villanova defense. Andy Talley will try and get him revved up. Montana with precious little time remaining. Now this was the scene 364 days ago on this very field. Montana against the Colonial Athletic Association team in the Richmond Spiders. Little trickery early in the game. Richmond would take the lead that they would not relinquish. Just too much Richmond Spiders. Richmond wins the FCS national title for the first time for the first year head coach Mike London. London now head coach at the University of Virginia after another exceptional season this year in the Colonial Athletic Association. These are the teams the CAA that have won it since 2003. Those are the highlighted teams. Delaware Blue Hens, James Madison, the Dukes, and the Richmond Spiders a year ago. Two of those wins coming against Bobby Houck's team. 2004 James Madison and Richmond in 2008. But still a pulse here for the Grizzlies. They've got the football, but they need to score in a hurry. 217 remaining. Montana just three first downs here in the second half. Andrew Sell out of the gun. Sets up the screen to Reynolds. 
Down the sideline, gets to the 25. Let's go down to Kara. Well, guys, you were talking about the CAA. The Colonial Athletic Association finishes with three teams ranked in the top six, and they sent four teams to the 16-team playoff this year. So if you consider Villanova, 7-1 in conference, co-league champion, they were battle-tested for these playoffs and this run that they've made. Thank you, Kara. Looking one way, going the other way. Sell completes it to Zambrano. So it's going to be short of the first down marker. The clock will continue to move. Boy, and what a great play by John Dempsey. The safety there. Two big Grizzly linemen waiting on him. And Dempsey wasn't going to wait on, on those big fellas. He reacts, responds, split those two tackles. And makes a very, very big play in space. Reynolds has the football, gets out of bounds as he crosses the 40, hits with the tackles. Montana still with all three timeouts remaining. They're down by nine, so they need a touchdown and a field goal. Now one thing you've seen in those last three plays, Mark Reardon does not believe in three game defenses. We saw that a week ago against William & Mary, even on a third and 13, gave up the big 98-yard pass play, but he will continue to blitz. He's done it all game long. I don't expect him to stop in the final 90 seconds. Again to Reynolds out of the backfield. Able to get out of bounds. There's a marker down on the field. And that could be a penalty. Some of those big Montana linemen getting downfield. Illegal block in the back. 75 offense. 10 yards remains. First down. Chris Dyke, the senior from Dillon, Montana. He's trying to counteract some of that blitzing and he's trying to hit a lane in those screen passes. And that time, Chris Dyke, the block in the back, really makes life difficult on Bobby Howe now. They had a miracle in Missoula, week one of the playoffs. And now with just 82 seconds left, all three timeouts, they better score in a hurry. Sell wants to run, now throws out of bounds. It's the water cooler. Take a look at our Coke Zero game track with 116 remaining. Matt Caesar, 255 yards for the junior, pair of touchdowns. Mark Mariani, 170 yards receiving on nine catches, but he hasn't touched the football here in the second half. And that blitzing has forced a lot of check downs in the second half. Many of the folks back in Montana have watched this game, even though you saw the trick play and the pass for the touchdown with Richmond. The previous play is under further review. We're going to take a longer look at this play. I think that the, the question is whether or not Andrew Sell was over the line when he threw that football. You know, but that Richmond game last year was really about the front seven of Richmond, and last year was Lawrence Sidbury in particular, a defensive end that just dominated the line of scrimmage. In the first half, Montana did a much better job protecting. They were able to throw it all over the field. In these final 30 minutes, whatever Andy Talley said to those guys at halftime and the adjustments they made schematically, continue to blitz. They went more and more to that run game, more and more of the triple option, more and more of that edge run. And really just wore down an undersized Montana front seven in this second half. Not sure if they're looking to see whether or not Sell went across the line of scrimmage, but maybe there's too many men on the field for counting players right now. Now we'll do our best here to highlight one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now you can play good defense when you've got twelve on the field. I think it for the second half, it felt that way for the Grizzlies. And Mark Reardon, you know, the one thing about Andy Talley, and, and you asked the defense coordinator Mark Reardon, I think a very good question in our production meeting. He said, what makes him special? And what makes him a guy that stuck around when this program went dark? And Mark Reardon said, you know, not only is he genuine and incredibly honest, he also lets us do our jobs. He oversees it. He, Counsels when he needs to, he gives us nuggets of wisdom, but by and large, he doesn't meddle. He trusts us, he allows us to run the schemes we want to run. And any coordinator will tell you that is a perfect working condition to be involved in. 
Andy Talley and his staff really reaping the benefits of that in this second half. You know, this is actually the final year that the uh, FCS will have this format of a 16-team playoff. Next year, the playoffs will be expanded to 20 teams, and that'll add an extra round of play. So it'll be five weeks of consecutive postseason play for Division I football championship subdivision. And because of the five consecutive, well, the five weeks won't be consecutive, the championship game is going to be pushed back until January of the following year, so not until January 2011. After review, it was determined that the defense participated with 12 players during the last play. Illegal participation on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot remains first out. Well, with 76 seconds left, you do have all three timeouts. I think it's time for Bobby Howe to try to dial something up deep down the field. No more swing passes to your back. You really can't afford to throw underneath this covers. I think it's time now to trust a Mark Mariani deep down the field, take a shot, because time is desperately running out on you. Up 16, all three timeouts remaining for Montana, down by a couple of scores. And still some confusion. I think this may be a clock issue, possibly. a bunch looking for Sambrano he's got it Sambrano touchdown Montana just what they needed what a disaster for Villanova they give up a 53 yard touchdown oh you're gonna see it again they blitz three guys they play one-on-one -on -one situation and it's the true freshman it's Eric Wolfer a 98 yarder a week ago against William and Mary you saw a tremendous play in the second half separating Sam Brano from the football on the third down but that time just loses side of the ball Sam Brano goes and gets it at his high point and completely changed the complexion with just a minute to go Montana still got all three of their timeouts remaining. Extra point is good. It's a two-point game. And now, all of a sudden, that missed extra point by Villanova may come back to haunt them. They should be up by three. Instead, they're only up by a pair. Sam Prado, a big touchdown a week ago against App State, gets one there. There's still a pulse with the Grizz. back to Chattanooga. Close two-point game. There are two other NCAA fall championships to be decided this weekend. Tomorrow, Mount Union takes on Wisconsin Whitewater for the Division Three football championship at 11 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Then at 8 Eastern time on ESPN2, Penn State and Texas for the women's volleyball championship. Log on to NCAA.com for more information on these and all 88 NCAA championships. Now, question now. What do you do if you're Montana? You've reached the championship game after a hard-fought win against App State a week ago. You're, you're left for dead almost, but now you're an onside kick and a field goal away from taking the lead. Onside kick goes out of bounds. It's going to be Villanova football, but it's not the worst thing in the world for the Grizzlies. Bobby Houck's team still with all three timeouts remaining. You know, I like that conversation earlier in the game. Maldonado and Hauk actually did a little talking on Three the sidelines. Out of bounds. There's the penalty. Five-yard penalty. Montana. Montana. That's First a real show of class Villanova. there between the head coach and player. They, they talked a little bit. It was on a play near the sideline. Maldonado came up and talked a little smack. And there you see some of the, some of the class in Bobby Hauk. Coming up following our game, Sports Center. But we still got 67 ticks to figure this thing out. Montana's got all three timeouts remaining. And Villanova's going to start in the Wildcat. They're going to give it to their stud, Caesar, out of the straight shotgun snap. He's got it. 
And Caesar dances across the 35 to the 34. Pick up a five. And that onside kick, the right move. You know, twice tonight we have seen Montana pin Villanova inside the five-yard line on some very good punts. And both times, Villanova just ran it right down their throat to get out of the end zone and out of their own goal line. So I, I don't. I think that's the right call with Bobby out. Now I think it's time you see him talking to Eric Stoll. I think it's now time they take a risk defensively. And they've got to walk those safeties up. They've got to put everybody around that line of scrimmage to try to make a tackle and force a punt here with two downs to go. Bobby Houck and Miss Missouri traveling over 2,100 miles to come here. Andy Talley and Villanova traveling close to 750 miles from Villanova, Pennsylvania, northwestern suburb of Philadelphia here to Chattanooga. One of the smaller schools. Roman just over 6,000. They've never won a football championship. Of course, back in 1985, they won a Division I basketball championship. Caesar still in the game. Wildcat formation. Here comes the blitz. Caesar, he's going to get the first down. Out across the 25 to the 23. Montana's going to stop the clock one more time. But they have this one time out after that, and it's looking pretty darn promising for Villanova. And that's fitting, isn't it, on a night where you've rushed for well over 300 yards, where Caesar has shown why he was the CAA Offensive Player of the Year, and you run right behind your left tackle. Aizelana, look at that block. That just epitomizes the evening. If you wouldn't mind, guys in the truck, why don't you re-rack that one? Watch the left tackle, Benjamin Eisenhower. Run that play again, if you wouldn't mind. Watch your left tackle. Not enough credit tonight. Caesar, he gets all of it. He gets the yards. He's ran through tackles. But look at your left tackle, Benjamin Eisenhower, 71. This is a statement, and this is that edge, that point of attack. And that's been the difference. Villanova has just been much more physical in the final 30 minutes. And Villanova with that capital V victory formation. Their quarterback, Whitney, takes the snap. And Montana, will they call a timeout? They will. They burn their third and final timeout, but that'll be the last time they can stop this game. And Bobby Howe's been around a lot of good football, 12 consecutive Big Sky titles, but he knows. And Craig Paulson, his former college roommate, now defensive coordinator, he told us quite honestly yesterday, if we don't stop the run, we're going to have a very difficult time winning 353 yards rushing for Villanova tonight. Coming up next, Sports Center. And this game comes to a close. Andy Talley, he's already got the, uh, the bath on the sideline. Got to feel good after 25 years. Remember, he resuscitated this program after they were dormant for five years. Villanova's going to have to do it one more time. Montana powerless to stop the clock. Now, Jay Wright in Villanova basketball. Andy Talley would be the first to tell you, on a national perspective, it's the face of the university. Raleigh Massimino, the, the huge win, the national championship in hoops. But Andy Talley and his football team making a national statement tonight, bringing home the hardware to Villanova. V is for victory, and V is for Villanova. Andy Talley and the Villanova Wildcats going to have their first ever football national title. Now well, Andy Talley's waited 25 years. He can wait another 23 seconds. They're figuring something out on the middle of the field. What was the difference in this game in the second half? It was just all Villanova after the break. <laughs> it's, it's exactly... It was determined that the defense hit the ball illegal by rule, offside, on a defense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. You know, it's very simple in football, Eric, at any level. Pop Warner, junior high, high school, collegiately, in the NFL, when you can run it right down somebody's throat and they can't stop it. When you can run for 350 yards and dominate the line of scrimmage, you're going to win a national championship. And that's exactly what Andy Towers' crew did tonight. Villanova doesn't need to snap it anymore. Villanova's been pass happy for years. That's what Andy Talley believes in. This year, he had the running game, and it runs 
season to his first ever national title. Congratulations, Andy Talley and Villanova. It's been a long time coming, but Villanova football, for the first time ever, they are tops in the entire country. Most outstanding player, Matt Caesar. 14 carries, 159 yards, two touchdowns, four catches, 68 yards. He was crucial. Whenever they needed a big play in the second half, he was the man they called on. You need your big play, big time players to make big time plays in the biggest of settings. And Villanova, Villanova got that production tonight. Whitney produced, overcome the early interception to play dynamic football. And Matt Caesar proved to the nation what he proved, proved to the Colonial Athletic Association this year. He is a difference maker. And Villanova are your national champions. Andy Talley, the happy head coach, is standing by with Kara. Take it away. Well, guys, we have John McCutcheon, the athletic director of the University of Massachusetts, presenting the national championship trophy to Andy Talley That's and the Zodiac Villanova City. Wildcats. Wow. Coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. Phenomenal game. Our guys played great. Montana is super team. You know, we played really well in the second half, turned the tide, and, you know, our kids really deserve it. They worked hard. What specifically changed in that second half? The Wildcats took over the game. Well, in the locker room, we were pretty subdued. We kind of knew what we had to do, and, uh, you know, we were really not very far behind. We've been in some tough games all year, and our pedigree really helped us. Your pedigree, 25 years with the program. You told us yesterday it's been a long time coming to get here. What does this mean to you? 25 years seems like 100 years, believe me. It was worth the trek. I, I just, I'm, I'm so happy for our team, our school, our president, everything. Fantastic, really. Villanova, the 2009 Wildcats. national champions. Yeah, Congratulations. Jay Wright's got to go win one now in basketball. There you go. <laughs> oh, Be on his back. He's been called out, guys. Let's send it back to you. Pulling my man out. <laughs> Thank you, Kara. Score one for Tally and Villanova, their first ever FCS title. For the second consecutive week, they come back from a double-digit deficit in the second half to win. Matt Caesar and Villanova, they win over Montana 23-21 in the FCS championship game. For my partner, Brock Heuer, Kara Capuano, I'm Eric Collins saying so long from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Coming up next, Sports Center coming your way. So long, everybody, from Chattanooga. Sports Center Telecast is.